Welcome back. Now, the NetBank segment tracker has revealed that South Africans still want to positively change their financial situation. This uh, through saving and investment. This is also as the country faces a sluggish economic outlook with gross savings averaging 14.6% of GDP since 2010. Head of Retail Investments at NetBank, Babalo Nongenke, joins us now with uh, more insights on the bank survey. Thank you so much uh, for your time, uh, Babalo. Now, there's really a difference between wanting to do something and actually doing it. And I mean, I'd, yeah, I'd just like to know, you know, I mean, I, I would imagine that South Africans do want to save, but are they uh, actually doing it, especially on a voluntary basis? It's very difficult, and I think we need to exercise some compassion because the cost of living has increased dramatically. Um, and so it is easy for those who are employed, for example, to contribute towards retirement investments because those get deducted. But on a voluntary basis, we aren't quite finding that lots of individuals are scheduling payments or doing stock orders, for example, which is the easiest way to put money aside for a rainy day or for a, a, an investment goal. I mean, just talk to me also about the dynamics that you are seeing, particularly on uh, the appetite for those who can actually save and voluntarily save, uh, the appetite between a short-term and long-term savings. Uh, so short-term savings tend to tempt some people. They put money away and then... Uh, as soon as some, for example, something like a sale comes up, yeah. then that becomes sort of like a, a need that has cropped up. Whereas um, actually individuals are able to almost classify different kinds of envelopes for themselves. And so you can have some money that you set aside in case of a sale. Mm -hmm. And you can have money that you set aside in case your tire bursts or for that trip that you have been promising yourself for. I think the key principle here is that we should all ideally get to a state where we thank ourselves, pay yourself first, and thank yourself for the effort of getting up in the morning and going against the traffic and working. That's how we should view savings. That way it will be a lot more uh, gratifying when that time does come and you know you don't need to go and swipe your credit card for example for a trip mm. or for uh, an emergency expense such as a burst tire it's actually quite interesting that you say that because a lot of us like to put uh, money in one pool, whereas as you're saying, you must have, you know, different uh, savings goals. For example, you're saving this in case uh, your tire bursts, in case there's a sale. So we need to be very clear on that and exactly what you are saving for. I mean, just looking at those dynamics, so what are some of the misconceptions that people do have in terms of saving and their saving journey? So we often think that we cannot afford to save. Yeah. Um, and my answer to that is there is always ways to be more clever to cut down spending. Um, and, you know, whereas, for example, an individual who may have previously been used to eating imported salmon, for example, that person can decide, you know what, I have a certain goal in mind, therefore I will eat tuna tinned tuna for now, or I will buy my groceries in bulk. That does save money um, and helps to pool resources with other like-minded people. The other misconception is that we tend to think that I need to be rich or I need to have a large sum of money before I start saving, whereas you can actually start saving um, in some cases, f from as little as 50 rands mm -hmm. um, and put money away. The most important thing to note is that saving is like a muscle. And so if you save that 200 rands instead of going to your favorite fried chicken uh, outlet, you know, when you add up how many of those 50 rands in a month you put away instead of spending at that snack place that you like, that actually accumulates over time because you also earn compound interest on it, which some have called the eighth wonder of the world. So with starting very little and being uh, consistent and making use of interest upon interest, compound interest, you are able to, from very little, accumulate 
a substantial amount and actually get that gratification of having saved towards your goal. And you are right. A lot of us think we cannot afford it because we have seen real incomes being under pressure, but also a lot of people now are living on a credit with this current uh, economic uh, environment. But, but I mean, you're talking about the compounding interest here. Have consumers actually appreciated and found opportunity in this high interest rate environment. A lot of us like to talk about the impact of uh, the high interest rate on debt, but not really on savings. So actually, people might think that the amount that they earn on interest is little. However, if you accumulate a balance into a savings or investment account and keep adding to it, I'll make a straightforward example. Mm. If you start with 100 rands and let's say for example you get an interest rates of five percent at the end of one month you're not only going to get interest on the original 100 rands that you have put in but if you have kept that 100 rands for the duration of a month you will earn interest upon the balance of 105 at the end of a month because that is interest that you're earning simply for keeping that balance and not withdrawing it. Yeah. And so if the following month you keep that 105, it will be now interest on interest on interest. So that's why it's called compound because the more you keep the money, the more you don't withdraw it, you earn interest on a greater balance plus the interest on top of the original balance. So that's why some call it the eighth wonder of the world because the, the, the more money you keep adding to your savings account, the more time you keep leaving it, even if the interest rate is not as high as what mm -hmm. you would, for example, pay if you are indebted. But the interest upon that positive balance as you accumulate it does really do work for you. And I've also seen, um, you know, in the last few years, also banks coming up with, uh, you know, an effort to encourage a more financially healthier consumer. Do these interventions actually help in changing and molding the behavior of consumers? So yes, banks have in, in the recent past uh, educated consumers and given consumers ways such as what is called wallets that come with transactional accounts which enable people to put money aside for different purposes. I think my encouragement to our viewers is to make sure that the accounts that they use for transacting and investing are used correctly. In mm -hmm. other words, do not use an account that is intended or designed for you to accumulate savings and instead you use it for transacting on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Use rather transacting accounts for transacting on a daily basis because the fee structure on a transactional account is geared for you to use your money daily to swipe, to withdraw, etc. Whereas the fee structure, for example, on something like a savings account is not geared for that. And so it's likely to cost you more if you use the account for a purpose opposite to what it's intended for. So make sure that the types of accounts that you used are in line with the design or the purpose or the financial goal that you have in mind. Ah, well, thank you so much for that, Babala. We do have to wrap up the conversation there, but I do feel more enlightened uh, after this uh, conversation. Thank you so much for your time. That was Babala Nongenge, Head of Retail Investments at Nedbank.